Well, it's that time of year again. It's December 2014, and it's time for the 2015 predictions. So the last couple of years, I've done predictions, and uh, I've put it all out there. I've gotten some of my predictions have been correct. Some of them have not been correct, and that's part of the fun. I'm just going to put it out there for 2015 and give you those predictions. But first, I want to talk about what I missed on in 2014 and what I actually got right. So let's first talk about what I got wrong. I predicted the Broncos would win the Super Bowl. Okay, maybe we shouldn't talk about that. That was embarrassing. I feel bad for my Broncos, but hey, at least they got to the Super Bowl. And uh, well, let's just leave it at that. I was wrong on that prediction. When it comes to the young Americans that I predicted that would, bre that would break through in 2014, Tim Smichek, Ryan Williams, Dennis Kudla, they actually didn't have great years. They're both, they're all hovering around 120 to 200 in the world. They didn't make the jump. None of them made the jump that I thought that they would make. So I missed on that one. I also missed on James McGee. At this time last year, he was close to the top 200. I predicted he would be top 100 in the world. He didn't get there. He's around 190, 200 at the time of this video. So let's hope that he breaks through in 2015. Moving to the guys that are ranked a little bit higher, top 10 in the world. Uh, Nishikori, I, I did mention him in my predictions last year, but I didn't think that he would have the year that he had. So very impressed with what he's done with his results and with his team. He's got a very solid team around him, and uh, I missed on that one. I, I knew that he would have a good year, but I didn't think that he would get to the, the world finals and be top 10, even top five in the world. So We'll see what I end up telling you about later in this video as it results to Nishikori. And Stan Wawrinka, fantastic year winning the Australian Open and really moving into that upper echelon. I didn't predict that. I still thought he'd be a second tier guy, probably a five to 10 guy, six to 10 guy in the world. And he got up into the top four in the world. So very impressed with him. And I missed on that one. And then as far as the big two that I thought that would, it would be a race for the big two between Nadal and Djokovic. Of course, I couldn't have anticipated that Nadal was going to get injured, uh, but I predicted that th it would be a race between those two for number one. It didn't work out that way because Nadal got hurt, of course. All right, so let's talk about what I got right in 2014. This is my chance to toot my own horn and uh, talk about some things that worked out for me in terms of my predictions. So first of all, we talked about trends. And the trends that I talked about last year were those that had the best team around them. And if you look at the results that uh, transpired this past year, again, it's consistent with having the most solid, the best teams. And right now, Novak Djokovic, his team is just entrenched. I mean, it is just so solid. He's got everything covered there. It was very interesting that he hired Boris Becker. Not sure how that was going to work out. And they actually proved me wrong. That, that's, that relationship is actually working, but the rest of his team really makes it work as well. So Novak's got a great team. And then Federer made changes in his team by bringing on Edberg. And obviously that helped him out this year. So if you look at those two guys, they really have the most solid teams out there. You could see the, 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 the opposite result happening to a guy like Andy Murray, who uh, part of ways with Lendl and has recently gotten rid of his fitness coach. So he's going through some changes right now. So just having that solid team around you is so important for success. I also talked about moving forward. Players are moving forward more, coming to the net more often. And two prime examples would be Stan Wawrinka. He's not afraid to come in. And of course, Roger Federer. He finally made the commitment with Stefan Edberg helping him to come to the net more. And you could see it in his results. It made a huge difference. And again, other players are also looking to get to the net more often. So really nice to see those trends taking place. And let's move on to the two coaches that I pointed out last year that are really making a difference. Patrick Mortagalu, who has been in Serena Williams' camp. He obviously is one of the best coaches in the world. And Magnus Norman, who has helped Stan Wawrinka. Those two coaches are definitely uh, two of the best coaches in the world, and they proved it again in 2014. So consistent with that theme of having great coaches, those were the two that I really wanted to acknowledge last year, and I've got two new ones for 2015 coming up. And then when we move to some of the players, some of the predictions I, I made as it relates to the top players, 
Roger Federer, I predicted that he would be top four in the world, maybe top three. He actually finished the year number two. A big reason why that happened is because Nadal got hurt. If Nadal was healthy all year, I think you would have seen Federer come in at number three. So he got himself back on track. Andy Murray, he had a disappointing year. I said in my predictions that I did not think he would come back strong after his back surgery and after the great year that he had. And then no Novak Djokovic, I said that he's the guy that's going to dominate for the next couple years and be number one in the world. He got back to his number one ranking this year. He's now finished number one three out of the last four years despite some very challenging competition from the likes of Nadal and Federer and others. And even though I said that he was going to dominate the few next few years, he, he hasn't really dominated, but he stayed the course and he's just been so darn consistent. So I'd like to think that I got that one right with Novak finishing number one, and I do think he's going to continue that trend. All right, enough talking about 2014. Let's get into my 2015 predictions. First of all, let's start with football. I'm going to go with the New England Patriots to win the Super Bowl. I cannot believe that I'm actually going against my Broncos, but I've got to be honest, the Patriots have been solid, more than solid, most of this year. They're going to have their home field advantage. They'll probably get to the Super Bowl, and with Tom Brady in a big game in Arizona at the Super Bowl, he's going to win. So sorry, Broncos and Peyton Manning. I love you guys, but I'm going with the, the New England Patriots this year. Let's move on to tennis and the trends. So the two trends that I want to talk about relate to coaching and the teams that these great players have, both on the men's and the women's side. So first of all, you're going to see the continued trend of players consulting with former tennis champions, former Grand Slam champions. Marian Cilic won the U.S. Open this year with Goran Ivanisevic in his cor corner. Kaini Shikori got to the top five in the world with Michael Chang in his corner. And of course, you've got Edberg and Becker and others. You're going to see more players looking to these great champions to get that extra edge. Another trend that you're going to uh, see, well, you're actually not going to see, but trust me on this, it's happening. It's the behind the scenes, what these players are doing with their teams. If they have three or four people in their camp that they're with on a consistent basis, they're actually going to start looking outside of their core group to get that extra edge, meaning they might reach out to a nutritionist, to a chiropractor, to a special psycho sports psychologist. There's really this premium now on the teams of these players looking for that extra edge and going outside of their existing knowledge base. And so that just shows there's a more open-minded approach to the tour now. So that's a trend that you're going to see more and more. Let's talk about the Americans. So there's two players that I want you to be aware of this year. One is a young American. One would be considered more of a middle-aged American. Remember this name, Jared Donaldson. Jared Donaldson is 17, 18 years old at the time of this video. He's ranked 250 in the world. He has turned pro. He is not going to college. And he's being coached by Taylor Dent. This guy has been tearing up the challenger circuit, going from literally no ranking to 250 in the world, and he's got a great coach behind him, a great mentor. So look for that name. He might not break into the top 100 this year, but give him two years. Just remember Jared Donaldson. Take a look at it. He's long, he's lanky, and he has a big game. Take a look at his game and just follow his progress. Another player that I want you to be on the watch out for, Ryan Sweeting. Now, if that name sounds familiar, this is a guy that got to top 70, maybe top 60 in the world. He retired. He married a movie star in L.A., and now he's enlisted the services of Craig Boyton, who has coached John Isner and Steve Johnson. Isner to the top 10, Steve Johnson to the top 40. Ryan Sweeting is coming back, and Craig is in his corner. Look for him to make a big jump in 2015 with his comeback. So those are the two Americans that I want you to look for. And of course, I need to acknowledge Sam Query and Steve Johnson both getting back into the top 40 in the world. They're doing very, very well. It'll be really interesting to see if they can maintain that pace or if there'll be a slight drop off in 2015. So next up, the top 10. Who's going to get, who's going to break into the top 10 this year? We've got a couple of familiar faces and a couple of new faces that could move into the top 10. 
Will it be Gail Monfils or Joe Wilford Sanga, who have been top 10 before but are currently outside the top 10? Or how about Ernesto, Ernest, sorry, Ernest Golbis or the new Australian Nick Kyrgios, who also is a young up-and-coming stud? Of those four guys, I've kind of pinpointed them as, as guys that can make moves this year. I'm going with Gail Monfils. He just had a huge win over Federer and Davis Cup. He almost beat him at the U.S. Open. He seems to have the injury bug solved, and he's actually using that buggy whip forehand a lot more. I think he's going to have the maturity to get back into the top 10 in the world this year. I think Nick Kyrgios will maybe get to the top 20, not quite to the top 10 yet, but be on the lookout for him. I want to acknowledge two coaches for 2015 and it probably won't come as a surprise to you. I'm going to nominate the two best coaches in 2015 in advance as Marion Vida, coach of Novak Djokovic. He's really the guy that uh, keeps it all together for Novak. When things are out of sorts, we always come back to Marion and see him getting his player, getting his charge in the right mindset and getting his game together. So he's one of the top coaches in the world. And of course, Stefan Edberg, who is more than likely going to take Federer to an even higher level in 2015 as he starts to understand the nuances of moving forward and playing more attacking style of tennis. So Marion Vida, Stefan Edberg, those are your two coaches to really continue to look at in 2015. I know that's no surprise, but I need to acknowledge these two guys because they're quiet leaders behind the scenes. They're making a huge difference. Okay, the women's game. So Serena Williams continues to be number one in the world. That's no surprise. As long as she stays injury-free, she's by far the best player and has the best coaching. I look for her to be number one again this year. But Maria Sharapova, really impressed that she hired Sven Gronefeld, and she seems to be very a very solid number two or number three player in the world. Eugenie Bouchard, she burst in on the scenes. I'm not really sure what to make of her this year. She's had some injuries and she does have some limitations, but kudos to her for breaking into the top 10 in the world. She did part ways with Nick Saviano, so I'm really not sure which direction she's gonna go this year. And then how about an up and coming American that broke through this past year? Watch out for Shelby Roberts. She could continue to make a move. My friend Michael Joyce is supporting her and consulting and coaching with her. I think you're gonna see her continue to rise up the rankings. Now let's go to the men's game. So what's going to happen in men's tennis this year? Where, well, the big question mark is, are the injuries. Rafa Nadal, will he come back from his injuries and his appendix removal this past month? And Juan Martin Del Potro, will he come back strong? Here's what I think. Del Potro, I believe he's going to come back strong. It might may take a little while, but I think he can get back to the top 10, certainly top five in the world by the end of the year. I think you'll see him hit his stride during the hard court season near the end of the year. But I look for big things from him. He's very, I'm sure he's very motivated after being off for a year. Nadal, I actually think he's going to struggle this year. I think that appendix being taken out is, a huge, is going to make a huge impact on him. And I just think the injury seems to be piling up. I know that he can correct it because he's got a great team, but I'm not sure that he can have the consistent results that he's probably looking for to keep chasing guys like Federer and Djokovic. And who else should we look for? Well, Nishikori, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins his first Grand Slam. With Chang and the rest of his team behind him, I predict that Nishikori will win a Grand Slam this year. I don't know which one it's going to be, but I think that he can do it. Federer, I actually believe that he could win a Grand Slam in 2015. He was oh so close at Wimbledon where I was actually at that match. I think that he can win a Grand Slam. Probably, it could be the Australian Open. It could be uh, Wimbledon. That's where I think that this, this all could go down for him. Of course, he's got to beat the likes of Novak Djokovic, who again, I think will finish the year number one in the world. You're going to look to have Serena Williams and Novak Djokovic be number one in the world at the end of the year. I know I just threw in Serena Williams and we're talking about the men, but I want to make sure I acknowledge her that I think she'll be number one at the end of the year. Novak will be number one in the year. He'll continue to set the tone on the men's game. But don't be surprised if Roger Federer wins a Grand Slam. And speaking of Grand Slams, the Australian Open. Who's going to win? I'll go with Serena on the women's side. 
And surprise, surprise, people are going to disagree with me, but I'm going with Roger Federer to win the Australian Open. Of course, contingent on Nadal's return, but I think the only guy that can beat Federer right now, especially when Federer is playing as well, playing this new attacking style, is Novak Djokovic. So, one last prediction. I'm going to get in the best shape of my life. I'm making a comeback to the to playing competitive tennis again. I'm not going to make a full comeback to the tour, of course, at 41 years old, but I am going to show that 41 is the new 30, and I am working diligently behind the scenes to get into the best shape of my life at age 41. So stay tuned on the progress that I make both on and off the court in that realm. I'm gearing up to play some pro events in 2015, so we'll see how that goes. All right, thanks for tuning in and listening to my 2015 predictions. I know it was a bit long-winded, but I wanted to make sure I covered everything. Thanks a lot, and I hope you enjoyed the video.